what it actually says is Tracy Beaker is a stupid show off and this is the silliest load of rubbish I've ever read and if she's so super intelligent then how come she still wets the bed like a baby like damn way to expose her Tracy doesn't deserve that you know she ain't no snitch she ain't no punk she doesn't tell on people she gets revenge Hey guys, today we're going to be reacting to The Story of Tracy Beaker by Jacqueline Wilson. I've had this book a long time, that's why the front cover fell off. Please just pretend that this first page is actually the front cover because if you look closely, you'll see that the first page is actually a drawing of the book drawn by Tracy Beaker herself. So let's just roll with that and act like that's the front cover, okay? Anyway, if you're new around here, listen up, because I've got a little secret for you. I'm not just any YouTuber. I am Charlotte Estate, and I'm a writer. So I don't just react, I review. And the way I do it is simple. If I like something, I add a point, starting from the last video's total. And if I don't, I take one off. Now, as y'all can see, I've got a couple friends here with me. These are the girls, Angel and Glitter, and this is my little boy Seth. Right, let's jump in. She was locked up all day and all night because she wouldn't settle. And you know why she wouldn't settle? She wanted her mum. They locked her up for wanting her mum. That's disgusting. And it's obvious Tracy didn't mean any harm in the long run, but Auntie Peggy still gave her a smack for it. Like she was like, I wouldn't want to live with you anyway. You're stupid and boring and fat and wobbly and ugly. Calm down. Damn. We are starting off with some tea. This ain't your typical story, you guys. As I said, it's written by Tracy herself. Last time, we found out that this book is actually kind of a project done by Tracy and all the other kids in her foster home. It's supposed to be a book all about them and their life and they can write it however they want to. Tracy mainly talked about her mum, like her actual mum, not like her foster mum, and how she was supposedly this big famous actress which was why she couldn't look after her. Then she told us about her previous foster parents and how things didn't go so well with them. And it really does seem like they are responsible for the way Tracy currently is. They're the reason she's so loud and boisterous and rebellious. And what was really interesting was that we got to see the effects of everything she's been through. She ended up kind of lashing out on her social worker, Elaine LaPayne. Elaine tried to give her some advice on how she should actually write this book. Advice that Tracy never asked for. And so obviously she ended up exploding on her. I mean, like, to be fair, I, I think we all know what it's like to receive opinions we never asked for. Anyway, so now Tracy is going, or she was going on about school and how she gets given intelligence tests that she apparently does really well on. Like apparently she gets a hundred out of a hundred every single time. But then she admits that she's assuming because they don't tell you the answers. She just has a feeling that she gets it perfect every time. But then do you know what happened? Just as she was writing about that, it looks like another kid in her care home snatched her book and started scribbling in it themselves. Like you can actually see the difference in handwriting and the difference in speech patterns and vocabulary, which I think is such a cool detail. Like that's such a creative way to let the readers know what being in a care home is actually like because I bet stuff like this goes down all the time. Like Tracy was really eloquently describing what these intelligence tests are like and she's actually pretty charismatic. 
But then, in really messy, untidy handwriting, someone goes on about how Tracy's actually a stupid show-off. What it actually says is, Tracy Beaker is a stupid show-off, and this is the silliest load of rubbish I've ever read. And if she's so super intelligent, then how come she still wets the bed like a baby? Like, damn, way to expose her. Tracy doesn't deserve that. See what I mean about the tea? Doesn't that sound exactly how a five-year-old speaks, though? Then after that, Trace is like, ignore the stupid scribble above. It's all lies. It's typical. You can't leave this place alone for two minutes. You see what I mean about the difference in language and stuff? The person who vandalized Tracy's book doesn't say their name, but Tracy doesn't need a name. She can tell who did it. And apparently, it's Justine Littlewood. Tracy's arch nemesis. Tracy's already vowed to get her back for it. Do you know one of my favorite things about that little interruption though? Like I said, the language and the handwriting were different, but it was the fact that the writing was crooked. Like, you know how when you were little, if you tried to write on a piece of plain paper, sometimes your writing would kind of drift off and it wouldn't be written in a straight line? That's kind of what happened here. It's only slightly, but it's things like that that make this so raw and realistic. That plus the fact that Justine also mentioned Tracy wets the bed because those are the type of things that kids genuinely talk about. I know some writers don't like including stuff like that, but it adds realism. Anyway, yeah, like I said before, it's not just Tracy doing this book about her and her life. It's all the other kids in the care home. So now, Tracy gets up and goes over to take a look at another kid's book, Peter. He's this poor wimpy little kid that Tracy doesn't really like because he's too much of like a goody two shoes. And when she goes over to him, she sees that he put her as his best friend in his book. Which means he likes Tracy even though she doesn't like him. Did that ever happen to anyone else? Like, I know when I was younger, like, I definitely had times where a kid liked me more than I liked them. Who am I kidding? It still happens. It probably happens all through life. But, oh my gosh, I would be lying if I said it doesn't get annoying. Like, most of the time, I am able to deal with it, and I'm able to at least be polite to them and treat them with some level of respect but the problems start if they start getting clingy and i'm not gonna lie peter genuinely does seem like the kid who would get too attached oh my days so when tracy sees that peter put her as his best friend she kind of shouts at him is this some kind of joke which makes his face go all red and he tries to hide what he wrote but it's too late tracy's already seen it oh my days this is low-key giving me secondhand embarrassment when tracy asks peter why he wrote that he mumbles that he did it because they share the same birthday speaking of which it's actually my birthday today 14th october i'm 22 now but anyway, Tracy tells Peter that them sharing a birthday does not make them friends. And at that point, Elaine the Pain gets involved. She tells Tracy that she's being too mean to Peter. And if she can't be friendly to him, she should just push off. And then in her book, Tracy goes on a bit about how whenever she gets told to push off, she genuinely tries to stick to the person as much as possible just to annoy them. Because Tracy's just a troll like that. However... When she tries to do that to Peter and Elaine, she gets called into the kitchen by Jenny, one of the care workers. Jenny tells her that she just wants Tracy to help out with the washing up, but Tracy can tell what she's up to. Tracy can see right through her. She knows she only called her to the kitchen to get her to stop fighting and trolling Peter. Then in her book, she goes on about how Jenny doesn't smack like her previous carers. She doesn't shout either. What she does is use ploys and tricks. If you're causing trouble, she basically tries to distract you. But even though Tracy can see right through what Jenny's doing, she doesn't complain about it. Cause she actually doesn't mind helping out in the kitchen. Cause if she's sneaky, she can steal a spoonful of jam or a handful of raisins or something. <gasps> oh snap. Damn! 
So while Tracy was helping Jenny out with lunch in the kitchen, guess what happened? She obviously had to leave behind her life storybook in the living room while she helped out in the kitchen. But while she was gone, Justine and Louise stole Tracy's book and started scribbling all over it. All over everything she'd written. Oh my god. Hours of work. Dozens of pages ruined. Just like that. Honestly, as a fellow writer, that pains me so much. If someone did that to my writing, I would probably cry for weeks. To me, having my work being scribbled over or even worse, having something spill on it, to me, that is as dire as losing a pet in a fire. That may sound extreme, but it really is that serious to me. Like, writing ain't no joke. Well, that's what we have the cloud for, I guess. See, but the thing is, back in Tracy's day, there was no cloud. Pen and paper was the way to go. This, this book was written in like 1992, I think. So yeah, it's not like Tracy just has a backup or can just restore her work to a previous version, no. She only had one copy, which Justine just ruined. Now I'm starting to understand why she's Tracy's arch nemesis. Ooh, see, now it's on. Now it's on. Tracy says that she isn't like Peter. He is a verified snitch. But Tracy, in her words, she ain't no telltale tip. You know, she ain't no snitch. She ain't no punk. She doesn't tell on people. She gets revenge. So, Tracy's made up her mind. She's finna get revenge on Justine. But she's having a bit of a conflict of interest with Louise. It's a bit hard for Tracy to believe that Louise is guilty as well. Because before Justine came along, Tracy and Louise were best friends. Like, they were so close, they considered each other sisters. A uh, quick little side note, those are the kind of friendships that I treasure with all my heart. I'm not gonna go into my ones right now, but I really, really value them. I think they are so special. But yeah, that's the kind of relationship Tracy and Louise had before Justine came along. And because they were so close, Tracy confided a really personal problem in Louise. She doesn't mention what it is exactly, but I have a feeling that it's her little bedwetting issue. Tracy said it's only a nighttime issue, and because she had her own bedroom, it was a really private issue. And she only told Louise to prove to her that she was her best friend ever. However, once she did tell her, Tracy knew that it wasn't the smartest idea. Because when she first found out, Louise laughed. Like, that right there is a betrayal. Like, how can you laugh when your best friend trusts you enough to confide something like that with you? I mean, they are kids, but still. Oh my gosh, and then, to make it worse, not only did Louise laugh, but she teased Tracy about it. She'd make these, these little comments about it here and there, which Tracy wasn't worried about at first, but then Justine arrived. And when she first did, Tracy was kind of in denial. She tried to convince herself that Louise wouldn't stoop that low and tell Justine. But eventually, her true colours were revealed. And it became obvious that she did tell her. Because of things like this. You know, things like Justine scribbling in her book. That literally said it all. So, her mind isn't completely made up yet, but one thing's for sure, Tracy's gonna get revenge. Whether it's by beating them up, whether it's by karate chopping them to death, 
or whether it's by getting her mum to come along and run them over in her car, she's gonna get revenge. Anyway, that is where I'm gonna leave it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give that like button a little kiss and subscribe to become a starlet. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram and Tumblr and if you have read something that has just left you shook without repair, let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys later. Bye!